Alongside the American Sarah Alexander, you can see Megan Foley in slot five, and it's a clean start. Desiree Ryden are in the white jersey, one of our younger athletes. But in the middle, who's that? Not sure, but this first boy is really close, so I expect to see quite a lot of uh, action and argy bargy around this first boy. That's Casey Sazeris on the le yeah the left hand side of the shot, swimming really quickly, uh, and she's got that clear water that she wanted. Um, and yeah, she, and this is uh, the young Canadian there that we can just see the white tri suit of. Um, it's fantastic having different colours because it actually means you can uh, you can pick people out, can't you? Yeah, but already it's Emma Jeffcoat leading there from Danielle De Francesco, the Australian who led out the Noosa try out of the water a couple of years ago, the 24-year-old. So it's two Australians in the lead, which makes me very happy at least. Jeffcoat and De Francesco as they make the first turn it is very very close and the boat hops out of the way there and there's a bit of a washing machine a little bit further on back and there's quite a spread through the field already yeah that's one of the things about having that first boy so close you know if you're in the first one or two you get round pretty much impeded straight round and, and you're off and you're swimming into your stroke if you're you know if you look in those girls five or six back where it's all bunched together and four or five people wide you're basically just fighting and, and getting dragged around by the people in front of you um, you waste a lot of energy doing that uh, makes it much harder and you're also um, you're also not, obviously not going as fast and losing time uh, I think Jeff Goat's taking this out hard you know you, you can see she's got a pretty fast turnover um, and she's she's swimming nicely at the front um, I think her tactic here will be spread the field out if, if at the end of the day if you're 20 30 seconds up on the person in 13th they've got to catch that certain or, or you uh, or you stay in the race rather than them. So um, I think the tactic is she's going to be pretty aggressive and uh, she's going for it. Swimming, they come out of the big surf life saving club scene. And it was interesting, I know the discussion before the race was the positions, the pontoon positions on where to start. I know Katie Safari thought that slot number 18 was the best spot, but she, I was expecting to be a lot further up this early in the race. I think, is that Summer Cook in about third position, fourth position in the red? Yeah, I think the other thing with where Safari was starting there, um, she might have had clear water, but it, it looked a bit of a longer, yeah, it agreed. wasn't a straight out to that first boy, she was a, on a bit of an angle, uh, so she had to swim a couple of metres, and you know, swimming three metres further doesn't sound very much, but over 100 metres, that's quite a significant difference, you know, and um, a second or two, and, and, and that's cost her. The, the, uh, a lot of fighting at the back yeah, of the field. All the, there was some definite fighting there. Whoever is there and who's now uh, at the back of the field just just had a, an arm wrapped around the shoulder and got pushed back a bit. Um, so, yeah, it stopped almost dead in the water. And I, I'd say the spread there, it'd be, it'd be in double figures in seconds, well over 10 seconds. We're going to see in any time now as they, they exit the water and come into, into T1. Plenty of panic at the back of the pack because the day could be over early for five, or will be over early for five athletes as Emma Jeffcoat leads them out of the water and the, it's only a swim bike run, so four kilometres and then two kilometres and five athletes are going to go home. Emma Jeffcoat, the first through transition for the first time. De Francesco second. And Summer Cook is right behind Katie Zafiris. And you can see the blue, the pink, the green, and the red all in the top five. So they're your top split leaders from Jersey. Katie Zafiris is our overall leader. And there she is closest to the screen. But the first out of transition is Jeff Coat. Good transition from Cook as well. But Jeff Coat and De Francesco are renowned swimmers. And they're showing that in this one. And now they need to hold on and not get spat out too far. Taylor Spivey, number 17 there behind Desiree Reitner and Rachel Klammer from the Netherlands, two-time Olympian in there as well. So a good early race from Desiree Reitner. She's still, I guess, learning the robe. She's one of the youngest in the fields. That's why she's wearing the white. Yuko Takahashi, too, also new to, to Super League Triathlon there in the top ten. But Emma Jeffcoat leads him up what we're calling Mount Malta, and it is because it's a 275-metre climb with a 6% gradient, which is... Not even the end of the hill, it's just the first turn in the hill and that's where the finish will be. But there's powerful legs required when you've got to hit that four times. And there's a, there's a lot of wind today, it's not, going to, it's not really showing up on screen, but they're punching right into a headwind, right up this hill, it's going to make it a lot more difficult. They'll make a left just up here, it's about a 275 metre climb. They'll make a left, it'll pinch again and then we've, we've got the big drop down to a hard right hander. I'd expect to see Katie Safaris just take close order of this. She doesn't want to push it on too much. She's trying to exclude people at the back and keep it safe. You don't want too many people around you 
and um, she knows that if she stays in this position, keeps the other girls off the back here, she can cruise through the rest of this round, not have to ride too hard and not have to run too hard, which is obviously the damaging bit on your leg, especially on the downhill. Um, I think, yeah, she's taken control of the race. She's at the front. Uh, she's with a couple of, obviously, Jeff Coates, Summer Cook there at the back of that group in the red and, and Desiree riding her. Um, Summer Cook, probably not renowned for her bike handling skills. And, and this is a really technical descent here um, going into this turn and uh, the, the dead turn at the bottom that they're hitting now. But, I mean, they've gone straight down that really quick in, in 10 seconds, probably quicker than we expected. And, and they're back on the waterfront. Yeah, and this is the fastest section. You're going to come down here. They've got a chicane as they come back through transition. And uh, you're 100% right. Summer Cook was a little bit tentative off that descent. She left the gap. She's going to have to work here to close that. So far as it won't take any risks now either, you know, she can just control the front of the race and um, it's actually slowed up as we can see. Yeah. There's more people coming into it. Um, I, I think uh, whoever that is at the back there, Charlotte McShane, of the groups that are coming together. Um, be interesting, is that number 13? I'm, I'm not sure if we picked it up from number the Number 13, so. Claire Michelle, I think so. At the moment, coming through transition, Zafira's yeah. Jeff Coat, Casper, DeFrancesco and Clamour are your top five. But let's not forget that this win is not necessary only to stay out of the bottom five. And at the moment, there's a big gap back to the bottom five as it stands. So all of these athletes will know that they're at the moment in the clear to an extent. And there's a big gap back to the rest of the field. Yeah, so th these girls will, will just want to uh, have a, a nice tempo now and keep away. They, they know they're pretty safe. I'd, yeah, maybe expect to see someone there, maybe McShane, want to move up, keep it easy for herself. She... She knows that if she can uh, push the pace as well and, and make sure those other girls don't get back in, um, it, it's making it easy for her. So we see Erin Story there is in, in 13th, actually already 15 seconds back. And um, it's going to be close there between 12th, 13th and 14th there. There's only three or four seconds and 15th as well, 19 seconds back. So five, that, that's the kind of relegation zone, if we're going to call it there, from... Uh, probably Joanna Brown in, in 12th down to Sarah Alexander in uh, 15th and, yeah, and only we, a few seconds between them. As we follow the lead pack, if you're following on at home, Joanna Brown is 13 seconds back and leads the, the tail group, if you like, from Erin Story, Elena Danilova, Sarah Alexander, Claire Michelle, the Belgian, Megan Foley of the USA and Claudia Seabock of Hungary is 10 seconds behind them as well. So she will be going home if everything stays as it is. Fantastic shots uh, from our, our drone up there, which is showing you exactly how much the gap is as the, the girls or the women at the back uh, come down the main hill. So everyone from the top 10 or top 12, if you like, or 11 now as it stands, uh, should be safe. You wouldn't expect Joanna Brown to be this far back. I think, uh, I think she's taken a lot of risks. You'd prefer to be up in this front group. You know, Summer Cook's drifting back and forth through this front group. But Joanna Brown was one athlete I thought would be a lot closer to the front. I know it's a... It's the elimination. She's probably got a lot Maybe of Maybe she's playing a there. smart race. Exactly. We've because there is seven. There is seven and only five are going to be eliminated. Yep. So maybe she's just uh, playing close to the exactly. wind. You can actually see this is her now riding across that gap and riding herself back into the race. So yep. I think she's probably safe. She's going to be, by the time they get to the top of this hill, I'm pretty sure she's going to be on the back of this group um, or very close to it and, and she'll be safe. That, that gap now has gone back to um, it's Claire Michelle who is in that worrying 13th place and, and racing it out with a, a couple of girls around her. Um, if we had some camera shots, it'd be interesting to see how they're working together. You know, are they being tactical about it and just thinking, I've just got to beat these three people I'm with, or are they still working together to push the pace in, in the hope that they can catch the people in front and give themselves a bit more breathing space in terms of people around them on the run? Absolute wealth of experience in this front pack, and they'll all know exactly how much work they need to do and how much work is coming up as well as they round the top of the course for the third time and come down the big drop into what is a very tough right-hand turn. And it takes about 10 seconds from top to bottom there and they are going very quick. Obviously now they're not pushing the pace too much, but we're gonna see it up and up as the stages go by. At the moment, Charlotte McShane leads and two Australians there with Emma Jeffcoat and Katie Zafiris looking as composed as ever with Kirsten Casper behind her. And as they make that turn back into transition for the third time, you can see how much clear air is between them and the rest of the field. Yeah, and that's Joanna Brown there, I think, just making just it onto the on back. It. If we can just, I think, yeah, the, the last person around that corner. Uh, one of the things with corners like this where you have to break hard uh, and it's tight is you get the exaggeration of the, the, the gaps. It gets much bigger because if you're further back, you have to break more. Uh, and then it's a much harder acceleration out. So that's why we see as we go back, you know, they're pretty close on the first few wheels, probably the better bike handlers as well. 
and as you go back, the, the gaps grow to metres and even you know, three, four, five metres even as we as we go to the back here. Um, but I think these girls know they're safe. I don't think yeah. anyone, apart from Joanna Brown, has probably just had to push there to get herself on the back, is is riding particularly um, aggressively, either physically or, or technically. It, it looks, looks like a nice pack ride, yeah. doesn't it? It looks yeah. very, very controlled. But there's still there's still a win on here. You still make $1,000 if you can win the stage. So uh, I'm wondering if it'll start to push. It's uh, Taylor Spivey, who didn't race with us in Jersey. She's come here. In, in really good form, actually. She won the World Cup in China recently. Uh, she's uh, she's swimming spectacularly. and Yeah, won that swim time trial, but I think was out the swim, not in the top five or so, or somewhere around yeah. there. So quite interesting how that dynamic's different between swimming in your own clear water and, and swimming in a group, you know. Was that to do with a start position or who she started around or the fact that she maybe doesn't get out quite as fast in that first 100 metres, but when she's swimming, she's quick. Um, that's one of the things that Super League kind of highlights. Well, the two, the two smallest girls in the field are on the front in this sort of hill suit, that, that power-to-weight ratio and the climbs, but they look very, very controlled. I think they're coming into transition. That was the last lap, yeah. isn't it? So they come off to descent. They're starting to adjust the shoes. Summer Cook is now at the back of that group. Um, yeah, I think uh, she, she's made it round. I think that someone, you know, the hill really works in her advantage. She's obviously fit and got a, a decent engine so can get up the hill um, and then has to just hold on around the technical bits every time. All right, feet out of the shoes as they come in to transition for what will be a two-lap run. And there is plenty of danger for Claire Michelle, Sarah Alexander, Elena Danilova, Megan Foley and Claudia Seabock. They are all between 22 and a minute four behind this pack. And it looks like they'll be the ones, unless they can have the mother of all runs, to, uh, to be eliminated. First up in the eliminator as they cross the dismount line. And it's a two-lap run. And after four times up the bike... Uh, hill that's going to be tough on the old legs coming up but also coming down if you have to race hard but the girls at the back or the women at the back will know that they're in the, they're in the five so it might already be lost for them yeah well um, you go up it twice because you finish at the top so you only come down it once interestingly uh, and I think uh, that might play into because running downhill can be tougher sometimes than running uphill itself especially you've got it up multiple times I think the people at the back here we know that uh, Summer Cook in 12th but there's Claire Michelle. This is basically, these guys might catch up. You know, they might still, Claire Michelle is known for her running, so she might just get one of these girls that are only 20-odd seconds in front of her, or maybe even less because of the spread of the group. So there's a chance that she's got to run hard, and, and some of the girls in this pack that maybe aren't the strongest runners have got to keep looking over their shoulders to make sure that they're not getting caught. I think um, the back of the field, though, I don't think there's... Um, I don't think there's any chance. I think uh, yeah. that that race is gone. Yep, day done for Megan Foley after a lap and a half, if you like, of the run. Uh, but there is your lead pack, and there's plenty of talent amongst them. Rachel Clammer, one of the, as you say, one of the, the, the lighter athletes. You like the more live athletes alongside one of the stronger athletes in Katie Zafir as our competition leader, Kirsten Casper behind her, Jody Stimson there as well, who has been training so hard for this one, and Claudia Seabock, last of all, the Hungarian who... Again, 21 years of age, huge learning curve for her and, and experience to be amongst these excellent athletes. It's been invaluable for her. Yeah, I think she'll be a little bit disappointed. I spoke to her this morning at the hotel and she was, uh, she was hoping to get through to the, to the second stage. Uh, she thought she'd be a lot closer in the swim. And I think that opening first lap and that climb, and this woman on the screen right now, Katie Safiri, did a lot of hard work and split that group. And now it's, it's, it's cruising. Yeah, so we see already Claire Michelle's made up a, a decent amount on, I'm not sure who that person is in 12th, but basically she has to catch, get across that gap to um, yeah, to stay in the race. She'll know so, that too, absolutely. Yeah, she'll see that and uh, she'll, you know, if you're Daniela Di Francesco, she's not like these girls at the front that are, you know, pacing the effort a little bit. She'll be going as hard as she can because she knows this is win or bust. You know, she, she either stays in that 12th position or she's uh, not playing any further part in this. So she will be running as hard as she can and... Uh, Really, doesn't she? She's, she can get the legs speed up on this down. And she's only got the climb to, to get to the finish. So. It's going to be a painful last 400 yeah. metres for her being hunted down. Um, so, yeah, you can see Claire Michelle, I think, just looking around a bit there. Uh, she's probably doing the, the mats on the go in ahead and uh, working out what she needs to do. Uh, but, yeah, she, she literally just needs to catch uh, the she person needs to catch. Her. There's Di Francesco coming around the turn now, and you can see Mich uh, Claire Michelle turning at the top. So that gap is evaporating, and there's still a whole lap to go. But at the front, it's, it's a race in four for the $1,000 between... Well, there's not that big of a gap. I won't claim it now, but at the moment, Katie Zafiris, Rachel Clammer, Kirsten Casper, and Jody Stimson are your top four with a group behind them who'll just be looking to bring it home. Desiree Ridener at the top of your screen, and in the far distance there is Di Francesco being hunted by Claire Michelle, which is the only real 
competition, if you like, going on during this opening stage as everyone tries to pay things a little bit tactically and you've got to start thinking about how much you have left in the tank because at the end of this, there's a 10-minute break and we go again. They finish at the top of the hill. They start at the bottom. So there's we walked it before, three and a half minutes to walk from the top to the bottom. Then they've got to get their bike ready. They've got to get their heart rate down. They've got to get ready to do this all again. And that's when the Eliminator really starts to pinch. Yes, definitely. I think stage two is when you'll start to see the pinch. And for a lot of these women... It, it looks very easy because they're cruising, but you start to get that accumulative fatigue. You know, that downhill running will play havoc on the legs. And, uh, and it's, the, it's the women like Katie Safiris on stage, on, on screen now, that I think will really be strong in the latter stages of this, uh, of this race. This is all about getting for it as easy as you can for these girls and the, for, for, you know, the, the podium potential people, I guess. Um, whereas these guys at the back, it, you know, they've got to run hard to keep themselves in it. In, going down the hill, uh, we didn't see anyone really take it on, I don't think, uh, which makes sense for the, the girls at the front. You don't want that fatigue and, and doms that you can get in your legs. But um, Di Francesco, she wasn't really going as fast as she yeah. could down the hill either. And there you go. She's, it looks like she's actually been caught there. So, um, yeah, she's now in the eliminating eliminated zone well there is the bubble Claire Michelle you can see at the bottom of your screen and Francesco, both 29 seconds back one of them is going to go home and one of them is going to go on to stage 3 behind them Elena Danilova as well who looks like she'll be having an early shower Sarah Alexander Megan Foley and Claudia Seabock but at the front Katie Zafiris she won't be thinking about the money maybe she'll be thinking about just showing everyone that she's got plenty yeah yeah, maybe, or, or maybe she's thinking, actually, um, I'm going really easy and I'm having a good day. This is the pace I want to go at. Or she could be thinking, well, if some of these girls chase me a bit, I'm taking a bit more energy out of them and I need to make this the long game. And so everyone uh, ends up at that last race as tired as possible. Who knows? She always looks very comfortable. Her running style doesn't change from the moment she puts the running shoes on to the moment she crosses the finishing line. And that's the mark of an athlete at the top of their game. And that's certainly what Katie Zafiris is. And that's why she's wearing the pink. And she will take the stage one win, take the $1,000. Big smile on the face. Kirsten Casper behind her. Rachel Klammer, Jody Stimson, Joanna Brown, Charlotte McShane, Summer Cook, our run leader from Jersey, will jog it in as well. I've well, seen them all, well, most of them, uh, just carry on running through the line. And that's probably the best thing to do. That's what uh, I would probably recommend, you know, jog through the line, keep jogging, keep the legs turning over, going down that hill. Um, and so you arrive at the the transition um, still moving rather than uh, your body's had any chance to seize up at all. Not everyone and Claire Michelle on the bubble will do it so she has tracked down Danielle DeFrancesco and she will go on in our top 12. DeFrancesco's race is over. She couldn't hold her off. Elena Danilova had a strong run there at the end. Couldn't catch DeFrancesco and there is Sarah Alexander as well. Another of our strong American contingent who really gave it everything, and you can tell. But that is a tough run finish. You can see from that shot yeah. just how steep it is up there, and that really takes it out of the athletes. They've got 10 minutes now. So for the eliminated athletes, day over. But for, for the girls up front, it's, it's 10 minutes to get back down to the bottom. It's an uphill finish. So as they start to heat up in the next stage and, and in the final stage, that's going to be very, very difficult indeed. Megan Foley makes it to the top of the hill as well. And you saw Claudia Seabock just before there walking. So she has pulled out or with an injury, we hear. Yeah, or eliminated. I heard, well, we've, heard, we've yeah. heard that there's, a, there's an injury, but... That makes sense. Because we'll talking to her this morning, she, she said she was in good form. She really wanted to get through to stage two. She seemed very, very confident. So I was surprised to see so her so far back. So in. So the, there's some different things going on here. You know, uh, some of the girls talking to the coaches, some of them just walking down. Some of them looking like, you know, they've really exerted themselves and others kind of casually jogging, as, yeah. as we're seeing here. Um, Joanna Brown and she looks comfortable. Casper just having a, a chat. So I, I guess they're feeling good. They, they got through that stage relatively easily, maybe, and they're feeling good about the next one. Let's have a look now at how stage one played out. Emma Jeffcoat led off the front with DeFrancesco and Katie Zafira, Summer Cook behind them. But the superior open water skills of the surf life-saving background of Emma Jeffco did the job. She led out of transition. Katie Zafiris third, and she looked comfortable all the way through. There is Zafiris, and she put herself up behind Jeffco for the first lap of the bike. But at no stage did Zafiris, our championship leader, who is two from two in terms of women's races or women's rounds in uh, Super League at the moment, won both visits to Jersey and now looks very comfortable here in Malta. She led in on the bike and led out on the run, and it ended up in a group of four, but there was 
all of these women knew exactly where they were in terms of elimination and then a thousand US dollars and the chance to cross the line first for Katie Zafiris whose race so far or weekend so far is going exactly to plan. Time to get stage two underway in the women's eliminator and there is 13 going into eight. So five more women will go home after this one. Zafiris at the left of your screen. Kirsten Casper next to her. Di Francesco got a great start again. Very, very good start in slot number five. So She's a great swimmer. I mean, you can tell straight away she's getting herself into some good water. Good turnover, good kick. You know, swimming's obviously a real strength of hers. Look, it's really hard to tell from the angle, but uh, I think that number 18 spot is almost certainly shorter because of the angle that the yeah. uh, the pontoons kind of slanted at. So um, you're just a little bit closer. So maybe it was a tactic of Zafaras in that first one or not to, to take it a bit easier. I don't know. But she's yeah. leading this one. Exactly. So, yeah, she's gone straight out and... Um, yeah, she's, she's leading the race. Here we go, the, the fight at the first boy again, um, even closer this time, but everyone seems to have got around relatively unscathed there. All right, clear water for Katie Zafiris, and Claire Michelle had a tough start, so she's at the back of the pack, and there's plenty of fight going on as the, the pressure rises in the women's eliminator. If you're just joining us, we've lost five women already in the opening swim, bike, and run. There's been 10 minutes break. And for another swim, bike and run in stage two where five more women will go home and the final eight will go on to race for the victory and the maximum amount of round points. Of course, this is a two-day extravaganza of Super League Triathlon. We've got the equaliser tomorrow, which is a whole new set of format and whole new set of rules. We've had an individual time trial for the swim already leading into that yesterday afternoon here in Malta. And there is plenty more racing to go for the women today. The men to take on this exact same course later this afternoon, 3.20 local time. But right now, it's the Katie Zafira show. She looks so comfortable in the opening stage, just measuring her performance. And at the back of the pack already, there's probably seven or eight athletes who will know that they're amongst a group who are in maximum danger. But Zafira leads our group and it's already starting to string out a little bit as they head towards the second boy they'll turn for home it's only a 300 meter swim four laps on the bike of this 1.1 kilometer course and two laps on the run you can see it's really rough in here i'm pretty sure um that's my compatriot jody simpson swimming over people and not in a, in a straight line uh, you can see it's uh, the back uh, mark there's three of them there and someone off the back already but in there the, those girls are, are fighting pretty hard and not not swimming fast um I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun to see how uh, Zafaris takes this one, you know, because she probably has to be a little bit more aggressive than the one before, but she still doesn't want to be too aggressive um, in terms of the pacing and, and pushing it along because she's thinking of that last uh, the last race. But I think this is probably for her a slightly less competitive field um, than uh, Jersey, and so she's probably pretty confident as well. I would have thought. It's You've been. Sorry, carry on. I was going to say, it's interesting to see they've gone a lot wider here on the on the left side of screen. That the the main group and these these three have gone a lot wider. I don't know if they bum that. Well, that's that Jaffco. I'm pretty sure leading yeah. that second group. So maybe she uh, took a bit of a better line from her uh, surf life saving days experience. She's but nearly caught the front of that rope there. You could see that someone got caught up on the rope of that. But she made up a lot of space. Out, but a much Francesco better line. out. Takahashi, Emma Jeffcoat as well. Katie Zafiris leads them through with quite the gap from Di Francesco who finds herself in second position as she did in the opening stage and she'll know that she needs to really put the foot down on this bike if she's going to stay with this pack. There's Emma Jeffcoat in the blue, our swim leader from Jersey. Yuko Takahashi is there as well as is Rachel Klammer. She's been swimming very well, Takahashi. She was third out in the first stage and uh, right up there again. All right, but Zafiris off the front. 3.41 into transition. Takahashi, Jeff Coat, Di Francesco with the head up there and pushing hard. Stimson, Clamour, Taylor Spivey, Kirsten Casper. Claire Michelle's got some work to do. She does she, indeed. Yeah, she has to make this group, otherwise she's in trouble. She'll have to ride on her own. You saw most of them jump on and try to get their feet in the shoes as quickly as possible, and that's because they know this hill straight away. If you've got a bit of flat road or a bit of downhill, it's sometimes worth getting your speed up first, and then once you're moving quickly, taking obviously stop pedaling and put your feet in your shoes. But with a, you do not want to be hitting that hill without your feet in your shoes because you probably don't really have a chance to do it on the downhill either. So that's why they're selecting to do it. Zafaris is. She's pushing a little bit here. I think she's just stretching that field out and 
making them work for it. There's a lot more urgency in this stage than we saw in the first. So it's uh, she was so strong in Jersey as well. She seemed to get stronger and stronger as the stages went on. And uh, again, I think that's her biggest strength in this Super League racing. She'll even be better tomorrow. And some of the girls behind her, we, we just saw some Takahashi and I think Jodie Simpson is just kind of on the back of that group here. Uh, yeah, they're, they're having to work really hard. Look at this. That's a face on Jodie there to get herself back in this race. Claire Michelle has managed to stay in touch with Desiree Rodner, who's just managed to stay in touch with the rest as they bomb down this hill. We're calling it the drop, and it is, I guess, the... TV angle there doesn't do it justice, but when you walk down there, you realise just how steep that is and how hard it is on the quads on the run down if you really have to push yourself. And then that tight turn, that gives you a great view of how tight that turn is and how big a handful of brakes you need to take to make sure you don't overshoot that corner. But Katie Zafir is off the front, and this is a lot closer race. We've kind of... You're at a decent advantage, actually, on this course if you've got disc brakes because you can just stop so much faster with the stopping power. So that means you can carry your speed much later into the corner and brake much later and uh, carry your speed around it better. So that's got to be brave, don't you? Well, it's not be so brave. much, because you know, you know it's going to stop you, so you're in a better position. Um, this bit is crucial here for Claire Michelle, because she can't, she's not going to be able to run herself back into this race by 20 seconds. Yeah, and Summer Cook. Summer Cook really has to, and I mean this with the utmost respect, do some work on her bike techni technical bike skills, because she loses so much time. She struggled on that descent. She's got such a magnificent run, but she has to use so much of she's it. She's obviously pretty strong on the bike. Yes. When you actually see her go up the hill, she moves all right. But, you know, this is a slow uphill corner, and she's not going around it at all. I, yeah. think, I think, yeah, she could she could be so much better. And she just looks unhappy on a bike. You yeah. know, I think, I don't know, she maybe needs to spend some time. Uh, and, yeah, these girls, are, they're riding, you know, riding harder. This is this is crucial. And I think... It's a, it's a time trial for Katie Zafaris here. I think uh, she's going, I can judge my effort. I don't have to worry about getting caught in a crash or um, getting caught up with any of these other girls. I can just time trial it and um, control the run, do the effort when and I need to being, do it. Yeah. Being able to measure your effort like that throughout the course of a stage, when, you, when it comes to that 10 minutes, how much more, if you don't have to really put the effort in just to get in on the bubble, being able to bring that heart rate down and stay composed going into stage three would be invaluable. If you have to really push it like Claire Michelle did, for example, everything is rushed in that 10-minute period. And you get to relax the run. The run, I think, is where you do most of the damage between these stages. And if you can, if you can open up on the bike, be technically more astute, work where you need to, get a gap like Katie's got now. She can control the run, control that effort. And that's all what, you know, it's what happens in stage three that's, uh, that's important. You win stage three, you win this race. So... I think it's a great spot to be in. So when you go into a corner like that in a line, um, really the, the kind of etiquette is that you follow the wheel in front of you. you. You can make it a lot harder and move up a few places by dive bonding down mm. on the right-hand side, breaking late and forcing your way into the line. And we actually just saw Joanna Brown do that there. I don't know if she did it on purpose because she needed to move up two or three places or uh, she didn't really know what she's doing, but that's quite a good way to crash if you want to. But also a, a, really, a really good way of gaining three or four places. Just no one, no one around you will thank you for doing it. I think no, nothing that... escapes the eagle eye of Ali Brown. Does... If you do something wrong on this course, he will call you out. Yeah. Oh, I'm just opening it's it up for the viewers so, no, so I, people no, understand. No, keep doing it. Keep <laughs> yeah. doing it, please. I, I think this is tough. Uh, I think Desire Ryden are here. I, I think she's out. Yes. Um, uh, she just about made it through that last one, didn't she? And, and fantastic for doing it because she's young. But I think we can probably say that she's eliminated now. Yeah, uh, Desiree Ryden, through, last time through transition, 18 seconds back. The, the group at the front, Katie Zafira, six Charlotte. seconds. Up on Stimson Takahashi, Jeff Goat, Charlotte McShane has just moved to the front of that group. Rachel Klammer, Taylor Spivey, Joanna Brown, and then in the elimination zone, Danielle DeFrancesco at 10 seconds back. Kirsten Casper is in that zone as well as it stands. And Claire Michelle, Summer Cook, and Desiree Ridener as well. But there is quite a group here of swapping places, and Jeff Coat on the back of that. It's starting to pinch. Yeah, Charlotte Machine's really pushed it on yeah. that one. I don't know whether that's because we were talking about earlier she's light and she does just get up hills better than people or uh, she's going, actually, if I can stretch this group out and have that 10-second buffer on maybe eighth place, I can run that a little bit easier, like you just said, and, and control the run, and uh, that means it's less damaging going into the next round. Yeah, Casper moving on to the back of that pack and making sure she stays in touch, and Michelle, Cook, and Ryden are the ones who should really be worried, and you can see two of them heading down there quite a gap back and I think that's Ryden are coming down last of all but Summer Cook is yeah as you say her bike skills maybe not up to scratch of the other athletes and this is a, a technically difficult course as well as being incredibly brutal uh, can expose that and that's what Super League Triathlon is all about exposing 
tiny weaknesses. And when you're a complete athlete like Katie Zafir, as we keep talking about, there is no problem. Yeah, I wouldn't actually say it's that technical. Um, Jersey's a lot technical because you're hitting yep. a lot of those corners, five or six corners a lap fast. I mean, here, basically, there's actually one technical corner, and that's not that technical because you probably can't get around it that fast anyway because you've got to slow so much going into it. Yeah, okay. Um, so it, technical in terms of the going up the hill and how you manage that effort uh, and coming off it, but not in terms of going around corners, I'd say. And you can make it. We just... Uh, we just saw you know some of them almost crash into each other on that flat bit so <laughs> make it, it a little bit more technical than it needs to yeah, be yeah possibly um and you ca you're coming off a descent if you're a bit uneasy on a bike you you, you, you hit some top speeds you come off a descent you've got to make a sharp right hander it can put you off you leave a bit of a gap and the women up front sort of open that as it goes into that constantina type effect and that's where she seems to be getting exposed so i think she backs a run a lot more you know we're talking about summer cook she'll be able to run through here but uh if she could work on that and get a little bit more confidence and stay up near the front, she could really challenge someone like Katie Zafiris for a win. Well, we saw Casper actually go on a tri bars on that straight bit and nearly fall off because she was on the tri bars, went over a bump and was close to a wheel in front of her. So, yeah, you, you can make it a lot harder for yourself if you want to as well. But this, on the on the face of it, really is one corner that they're about to go around now. You break into it, get around it, and, and that's about it. Just don't be too far down the group. The one we're not talking about a lot is Takahashi. I've seen her up near the front. She's been well positioned. Yeah. She swam great. She she looks fantastic on a bike. She sits right up, never too far back. That being said, she seems to have drifted back on that descent. <laughs> but uh, And she looks to be running well. And uh, it's the first time we've seen her in the Super League racing. So it's uh, our only, our first ever Japanese racer. So we're coming to transition onto the run now. And this gap behind Katie Zafaris hasn't grown at all. She's just controlled it. I think she's had a great race, and there's a bit more of a fight behind her, I think, with Taylor Spivey just making it first into, into T2 there for this round. And uh, I think there's probably three girls off the back here who are uh, almost certainly eliminated, but that means there's two more out of this group that they've got a race for. Um, Summer Cook potentially could run herself yeah. back into it with Michelle, maybe, but Summer Cook known for a, a running strength. But yeah. I think uh, it's going to be hard for her. It's a, it's a tall ask. Well, Di Francesca, we saw in last day, struggle on that run. She's not really out for running and you've got both Cook and Claire Michelle coming at you. If you if one of them does overtake Daniel DeFrancesco they'll have to take the next person in that group okay. so, and that could be anyone so at the moment there's three including Desiree Rodner who's last of all and Jeff Coat is in that ninth position but she's off the back of the pack so already you can see Summer Cook really putting the hammer down there. She's all, DeFrancesco they've yeah. got her already. They've I think Summer already. Cook's probably going to do it. Um, yeah. You saw Actually, that gap didn't look as far as he thought it might be. And we're seeing it now as they run around the corner. That's Jeff Coat in the blue, yeah. Summer Cook in the red. And you can see the difference in speed. You know, uh, Cook's cadence is almost twice that of Jeff Coat's. I think Cook's probably going to catch a few here. She yeah. could catch Casper as well yeah. there, who, I mean, she's got a, the running style that she can, she can do it all day. But Summer Cook is certainly pushing the pace. And she's already about to catch Emma Jeff Coat. And there she is around the turn and up the hill. But already near the top of the hill, Katie Zafiris. This is a different type of running for a lot of these girls as well. You know, the, the standard World Series kind of courses you see straight on a really flat road out and back is kind of about tempo running and you just get into a rhythm and crack on. And, I mean, this is rhythm breaking. You're going up a hill, down a hill, round a corner, a uh, bit of flat here, and uh, that is that is quite different. So, you know, they might struggle a little bit with that. Summer Cook's already gone yeah. past Jeff Coat. She, she relies so much on a run. She's in the Red Runners jersey from the Super League. We saw it in Jersey. She ran through a lot. And she relies so much. And I'm wondering if Kirsten Casper, who you see just in front of her in the green cycling jersey, is just being very, very conservative. She looked over her shoulder. She did the count. And uh, she's not mixing it up in the pace. There's no need to. If you're very, very safe, she gets through to the last race. And it's the last race that matters. She's not, though. But um, summer, not only is Summer Cook coming fast, uh, we've also got uh, Claire Michelle coming fast. And if Michelle catches um, Casper with... Um, with it still in front, she's going to go through and Casper's out, I think. So that would be the eighth. Yeah. yeah and Yuko Takahashi, who, as you say, we, she's been at the, yeah. the front all day, is suddenly in the danger zone. There is Claire Michelle and there is Summer Cook, and that's around where our bubble is at the moment. Zafira, Spivey, Stimson, McShane, Clammer, Brown are our top six. Takahashi, seventh. Casper's eighth, and only the top eight go through. That leaves currently Jeff Coat, DeFrancesco, Cook, Michelle, Ridener, but it's changing so much around that bubble, and we'll get a real chance when they come through transition to have a look at who's going to be strong up that up that hill the last time, because some people looked comfortable, and some people looked like they were having a struggle. So one more time up through transition, one more time around the turn and up Malta Mountain, and we'll see out of the women you can see on screen, who's going to go through? Because only seven 
of that group with yeah. Zafiris off the front are going to make it through and Takahashi's day could be over. Taylor Spivey looks very, very relaxed, very comfortable. She was counting. She's got the climb to go. And you can see by the faces that the hill's starting to take a bite. You know, you've done it, what, we're third, our fourth time up this climb as we come through transition. And uh, so far as his rompiness, isn't she? Yeah. It's just easy. Uh, you can see nothing on her face. Um, I think uh, Summer Cook is still our eighth marker here. Um, oh, she's just passing Casper. So they're, they're seventh and eighth, I think. Um, so one of them's going home. Seven yeah, and eight. Seven yeah. and eight. So there's now a potential. No, eight's in. No, eight's in. Yes. So there's potential for Claire Michelle to catch that last person, but I probably don't think that's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, I agree. Di Francesco, second out of the water in both of the two stages, just squeaked in in stage one. That's not going to happen in stage two. And Kirsten Casper is on the bubble. So she is eighth as it stands. There are our group of women who will go on into stage three if Claire Michelle can't catch the back of this pack and there is the gap between Casper in the green and that's actually Takahashi in there yeah. as well so she's gone backwards out that yeah. group so she's yeah. almost certainly not going to come back to uh, to cap to pull her way back into the next round and and we can't Claire Michelle is a way back there yes. I'd say at least 15 seconds so I think we can safely say these eight and uh, Taylor Spivey there is really measuring her effort seeing her look behind mm. a lot in that last few hundred meters to to, she can. You won't want a sprint max up this hill for the last 400 metres if you didn't have to, and um, she knows what she's doing here. A couple of our Frenchmen on the right just warming up for the men's race. Vincent Louis, who's our championship leader, alongside Leo Bergeret there, just going out of screen onto the right. The two Frenchmen, Louis so strong. Uh, his partner, Taylor Spivey, looking, as you say, so comfortable, but out the front and up the hill for the last time in stage two is Katie Zafiris, who has sent a message if she didn't do it already in Jersey, to the rest of the field, and she'll pick up another $1,000, and she'll move her way in to stage three, looking incredibly comfortable. So already two times through the tape for Katie Zafiris, and she looks super happy, and why not? Here come the rest of the pack, and she can just sit back and see who she has to fight in stage three. And that will be Joanna Brown, who found herself in the bubble in stage one, who's come through, Rachel Clammer, Jody Stimson, Summer Cook gets in, Charlotte McShane, Kirsten Casper and Taylor Spivey, who's smart. She Very just let smart. herself drift to the back there. Didn't need to do the job. And in ninth, unfortunately, is Yuko Takahashi, who misses out. And Claire Michelle, who has been fighting all day, fights her way into 10th position. Taylor Spivey, Spivey drifted back from fourth all the way to, to the last qualifying position up that climb, which is very, very smart. Measured her effort really yeah. well. Um, and, but you did see coming across the line, you know, a few of those girls definitely had slightly more pain faces than they did in the first round. And already they've got to turn their attention because they've got about nine minutes into stage three. Emma Jeffcoat and Desiree Ryden are sprint to the line. Well, one of them sprints and the other one gets over the line. Unfortunately, their day's done as well. Of course, there is points on offer in terms of positional placing and that feeds into the overall round points and championship points. Desiree Ryden, the Canadian, has, has given everything, as has Daniel DeFrancesco, who has enjoyed every moment of her time here in Malta, as they all have, and enjoys crossing the line, has put everything into it. And to make it to stage through is a big feat for anyone. And for the 24-year-old, no different. So after all that, I mean, who do you think, who look? I mean, we know Katie Zafiris looks... We're looking, the at the we're, we're looking at the eliminated athletes, and they look absolutely cooked. It's a lot warmer out there than the than it, than it looks like on screen. But, uh, you know, I know you're eliminated. You're probably on the bubble anyway, and you're hurting. But uh, they look absolutely tired. <laughs> well, isn't, isn't that what you wanted it to be <laughs> yeah. when you made this up? Well, you see the difference of the, of the women up front. They're looking very composed, very controlled. But you can see it's really starting to pinch. When you compare stage one to stage two, it's, uh, it was a different looking race. And, and this is the business end now. We talked about it earlier. This is the only stage that matters if you're running for the race win. And uh, it's what happens now. Wherever you finish in this stage is where you finish overall. All right, let's take a look back at stage two. We had 13 athletes jump off the swim pontoon in, in positions they could choose themselves based on their own finishing position. Katie Zafiris won it. She went off in 18 and she came out of the water first and another clean transition for her. She's very clinical. We know that. And she had a bit of a lonely race out front all the way through this stage and it allowed her to measure her efforts as there's a couple of very tight turns, just allowing her to see where the rest of the pack was, and she did. The rest had to fight it out, and there was a time when we thought that we'd have a bit of a struggle on the bubble, but 
The cream rose to the top as it tends to do. So a lonely ride for Zafira. She measured about a four to six second gap all the way through that bike and just increased it on the run and looked well within her means all the way through. Casper Cook ran herself out of contention and back into contention. But at the end of the day, Desiree Reiner and Di Francesco go home and Katie Zafiris goes on to stage three where championship or round points are on offer. 25 for the winner, 21 for second place, 18, 16, 14, 12, 10, 8 and 6. Here we go for stage three. The girls have been holding back a little bit and now it's time for all out racing. Forget the tactics, forget trying to finish on the bubble. Now it's trying to win a sprint triathlon. Swim, bike, run, all that stands between these women and the maximum championship points. And there is Summer Cook giving it everything in the middle. But already on the left of screen, Katie Zafiris is going to take the lead and give herself a clear shot to the first boy in the left-hand turn. And that is a carbon copy of how it all panned out. To me, she looks like she's two. taking this a lot more aggressively, yeah. like the strokes faster. She's kicking harder. Uh, I think she is now taking this on. Um, it looks a bit different, and there's actually clear water. Yeah. It's a hard position. We've talked about this before, but all those girls behind her in the line, the five or six of them, they're slowing each other down, and unless one of them gives way, no one's going to get on her feet. So uh, she's gone already, potentially. Well, the, they've dropped. She's dropped. There is no one on her feet. You're exactly right. That dragging, of each other, dragging off each other slows everyone down, and once that open water goes, it clears out. And whoever there is, there's someone trying to make it across. And you just see that it was half a body length only five seconds ago. And now it's a full body length because of these three girls behind her, which I think that's Spivey there. Charlotte there, McShane. Left, Charlotte McShane. I'm not sure who the other one is. But yeah, they've basically just let Katie just have a, an easy ride here. All right, and she's extending that gap as the seconds tick by. And that could spell a, a best second place finish Spivey. for the three wide here. Kirsten Casper in the middle. And Spivey there, Summer Cook. And... Charlotte McShane as we head back through the pack but yeah, all these women taking time from each other as they fight for second position and that's what they could be doing for the rest of this race fighting for second position as Katie Zafiris is making it look too easy at the front yeah and you can see that they're trying to make that across the gap and that's Taylor Spivey there on the right of our screen in the group but just the person on the hip and I think is that Kirsten Casper Kirsten Kasper there because she's about halfway down her and, and kind of swimming next to her hip she's really slowing her down if she gets slow water she's still got a draft from Zafaris in front you know you, you get that probably as far as 10 metres back so she has got a chance of catching it and she's just getting into clear yeah. water now and maybe she's starting to make it across that gap and yeah you see it is just starting to close a bit because she's got the, the clear water she's going, oh, she's going a bit terrible. of a dodgy angle yeah, yeah. Um, but she's got a chance and out of the draft as well she, she wants to be really straight behind if she possibly can to make the most of um, make the most of the line I think it's probably actually Zafiris that took the long, wrong line there she, she's got to come a long way around that boy hasn't she yeah. we'll see if Spivey can make some time up as they straighten out she's on the and head here. for home and she looks like she got up to about two and a half body links and it's down to a body length now and Cook comes around the outside of Casper and those two near fighting but Spivey's found a way into some clear water as we say and there's our four at the back there also fighting Joanna Brown last of all but Katie Zafiris will lead out of the water this time Spivey from Cook and Casper and then Jodie Simpson behind those two so Cook and Casper in a good position like Summer Cook says she needs to nail this transition now um, and if she can nail the transition and get out on the bike she knows that technical th part is a weakness at least she's got the rest of the group to fall back you know down rather than starting at the back and, and just going off the back Big crowd looking on as the women hop out of the water. And Katie Zafiris will be first of all. Gets a hand out, doesn't need it. She's been so good in transition each of the times she's been through onto the black carpet. Casper comes out in fourth. Clamour, McShane, Stimson and Brown. And there are your top eight. I was wrong about Jody Simpson. Simpson's at the back there. So they're going to have to ride really hard on this first part of the bike. Uh, Zafira, she's just clinical, isn't she? Yeah. She, uh, she doesn't look like she's rushing. You know, I think rushing sometimes makes it slower. And she just gets it right clinically every time. And uh, uh, that's why she's so good at this format. You saw Taylor Spivey in a real rush through transition. She knows if she can jump on the wheel of Katie Safari's out of here. Summer she's Cook on had a, had a terrible. terrible transition. And now... Um, she's dropped away. Yeah, so she's, she's absolutely neutralised any advantage that she had on the swim. Uh, it's really slow to get on a bike, you know, no flying mount there. Um, and 
yeah, she's probably lost five or six seconds at least. But the bigger picture of that is that that could cost her 15 or 20 seconds on this bike because she hasn't got the group to fall back through. Katie Zafiris is just taking it on, isn't it? She, Look at that. We haven't seen that aggressive racing from her yet today. I mean, she's actually really going for it now. And, um, yeah, she, she just wants to control this from start to finish. I think this is probably going to be a, a domination from her. Taylor Spivey's coming hard up the hill behind her to try and get on. She's got a fair bit of work to do if she's going to do that. There's probably an equal gap between Zafiris and Spivey is between Spivey and Casper, who leads the pack, now tailed by Summer Cook. And after all the talk we heard about transition, yeah. little mistakes have cost her exactly like she was trying to avoid. But top of the course, first time, Katie Zafiris, and here comes the chasing pack behind Taylor Spivey. Cook's managed to tack on to the back of that pack, but... She's obviously quite strong when she rides on the hill. You yeah. know, she rides yeah. fast, if not faster than quite a lot of those other girls around her. It's just uh, whether she's five seconds off the back when after she goes around that bottom corner that uh, Zafiris is going around now. You know, she's actually riding a bike with disc brakes, so she can afford to brake really late, get around the corner, um, and it's tight. It's actually a funny angle, that corner. You go into it very wide and you come out of it very narrow, so uh, it's quite got a big potential for it to go wrong. She is in clear air, though. Katie Zafiris, and already in that first lap of the bike, has put more time into Taylor Spivey, and she just looks so strong up the hill. She's so strong up the first climb. It's where she's established a break on every single every single stage today, and uh, she gets that gap. She she likes to be out in front. She gets established, and uh, she's she's remarkable. The thing is, if you're a good swimmer, not only are you faster than you at the front. You're, you can also control your effort a bit. So you come out of the water that little bit fresher, you've got a little bit more gas to give it going up that first bit of the hill uh, or push you know, whatever the first bit of the bike is. And I think that's what she's doing really well. Um, these girls, it'd be interesting to see if they start looking at each yeah. other or they just take it on to, to catch Spivey in front of them. Um, you know, you, because it's the multi-day format, you should really be trying to get every position you possibly can and, and move up and catch. Well, you see the difference in urgency between this group and what's happening up front with Katie. She is top to bottom out of the saddle this first climb grinding a bigger gear punches through this left hand turn up here and just opens up every single one every single climb yeah she's away and, and that gap is definitely only getting bigger uh, the, the interesting part of the race now is going to be whether these girls catch Spivey and uh, uh, it's going to come down for the run Ho hopefully a, a 400 metre dash in the, for the last minute of racing yeah, yeah. if we put that in, into context Katie Zafiris might walk away with 25 of a possible 50 uh, round points with 20,000 US dollars on offer let's say Taylor Spivey takes 21 points if indeed she does but between third and eighth there's a 10 point gap 18th for first and eight yeah. for eighth position and when it comes down to not only prize money, but also championship points and every marker that you would like. The difference between third and eighth in the eliminator in this pack, it might only be a second, but it's going to be huge. And there will be uh, plenty of fight when they come up that run for the last time, especially if Spivey joins them in second position and we have a group of seven. This group went up that hill really quick on that last time and took a lot of time out of Spivey. I think we saw Joanna Brown at the front uh, on that dead turn, and so maybe she really put a bit of effort in. Um, but they haven't caught much going down the hill. But that, that gap's coming back. I think they'll have caught her by the end of the bike and they'll be going out on the run um, as a group of seven with maybe Summer Cook probably a bit off the back. I, I see this as sort of the women's racing now, especially here at Super League, is sort of a little bit, I'm saying this with the utmost respect, the Brownlee effect. You guys were so far ahead of the game. She seems to be, a lot of the girls seem to let her go and say, look, I can't, I can't cope with that because leave her out of the picture and, and she dominates and they start looking at second, third and fourth position. I know uh, having raced you once or twice, Alistair, I never even looked at you as a, as a person I could potentially beat. It was always looking at uh, the athletes you're about, around well, me. You were about 25 years older than <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it, it was. I used to see a lot of the athletes. They're like, look, it, it, they're in the... I can't touch that. It's too difficult, too hard. I'll start looking around, focus on the athletes I'm used to racing and, uh, and just try and be more consistent because... She, She's dominating everywhere she races, and uh, and she races with such aggression and such uh, such strength. It's it's demoralising for the others. It's multi-day format as well. You know, if you're thinking actually I can chase Katie here, and that costs me a few extra percentage of energy, but actually tomorrow's another day. Yeah, you know, you, I think it's been about a bit clever about how you manage that kind of load, I guess, over over the weekend and. 
um, yeah, I think uh, rightly so, these girls should now start looking and going, actually, what do I need to do to come second or third in this race? And that me means beating so-and-so, and that means I need to be here coming to transition, and um, th that'd be the sensible way to race. I think it's probably still racing aggressively, so that's why Spivey's still riding. You know, she knows that I need five or ten seconds going out onto the run, maybe, and maybe I can hold on to third. You know, maybe that's a calculation she's making. Um, so that's why she's still riding hard and it doesn't really make that much difference whether you're in a group or not because you're just going up a hill you're not really getting that much of a draft although it's a slight headwind so you get more draft than you would if it was a tail or no wind uh, and then you're going straight down the hill and then you've got this bit on a flat where maybe you can just get a bit of recovery so yeah I, I think uh, you're probably just better riding and, and making it hard for everyone here Summer Cook starting to fall a little way off the back wheel of Jody Stimson in this group and she is currently in eighth position. Zafiris just looks so smooth through that S-bed in, S into transition. And already she's back on the hill for the third time. And just looking so composed. You can see it in her features. She knows exactly how much effort she needs to put in. Spivey's still holding off the group. And there is Cook last of all as they come round onto Malta Mountain. But at the moment, it, last time through transition, Zafiris has a 13-second advantage over Spivey, who's four seconds ahead of Brown, McShane, Clammer, Casper, Stimson. And Cook, last of all, as they round, go up the hill one more time. And there's the gap between Spivey and the chasing pack. And Summer Cook's just doing everything she can to stay in touch with that pack. Really big gear from yeah. Zafiris there. I think she can probably afford a little gear, especially at the top. Maybe she's made the calculation not to not to uh, take it down. But you can see it's become a lot more aggressive from this pack on this last lap. I don't know who. Maybe it's jo Joanna Brown. But you saw at the bottom of that hill that a few of them towards the back had to really rev to stay on. And they dropped Cook. Yeah, that's why that gap to Cook. You know, if Cook was in this pack, if she was there, yeah. we'd, we'd all be going, yeah, she's probably odds on for a podium position here um, as it is with 10 or more seconds off the back I think uh, you know she's really got a work cut out full credit to Taylor Spivey for staying committed in the chase after Katie because uh, you know we're on to the last lap she hasn't been picked up she'll get a nice clearer run through transition and uh, she could be, she could put herself on the podium I think Joanna oh. Brown's ridden well there you yeah. know I don't yeah don't know if she's a renowned cyclist but to me she looks like she's really pulled that uh, group along and yeah got a bit of a gap for herself coming into t2 um, probably you know going through that last corner so yeah that's really good to see yeah brown really coming into her own in the last couple of years commonwealth games bronze and a bunch of top tens in world triathlon series events bermuda edmonton uh, Montreal and she had a great year in 2017 as well so she's really coming to her own the 25 year old and, and she'll be looking transition. at potential second place and there she is coming out of transition Casper behind Stimson McShane and Summer Cook who's been dropped off the back and she'll have to have the run of her life if she's not going to end up in eighth position Rachel Clamour there as well ahead of Brown so there's plenty of talent and plenty of experience in this in this pack it's about who has a little bit left in this final run of the eliminator for the women but you are looking at the absolute cream of the crop as they chase Katie, Katie Zafiris in the distance she's had a very lonely race and a very lonely afternoon in general Katie Zafiris but she'll be very happy with that she got a 15 second buffer here I mean over, yeah. over 1.1 1 .1, no just about 2k one and a half laps I think uh, she's going to be pretty comfortable with that she's got to be really happy I think uh, the race is going to be a bit further back I don't feel like we talked about Rachel Clammer very much yeah but, agreed you yeah. know she's a great runner she's got herself in a great position sitting in third place there uh, she's of light frame so should suit running up this hill um and, you know, a great all-round runner as well. So this kind of difficult, uh, tricky run course should suit her as well. So I think um, she uh, she's looking good for a, a podium position here. Who, so who have you got? You've got Spivey and Clamour, two and three? I think, no, I think... With a, uh, with a K and a half no, or so to go? I think probably someone might catch Spivey, but Clamour's looking good there. There is Spivey she, and, and Clamour's side yeah. by side. Yeah, I, I think Clamour's going to go. I'm going to go for her. I think Clamour's going to get second here and Joanna Brown. Because I, I was calling Kirsten Casper, but she looked a little tired coming out of transition. I think the climbs have started to catch up with her. Summer Cook's too far back, and uh, and I just think uh, Taylor probably did a little bit too much work staying away on that bike. You, you, you jump ship so quickly. Yeah, we saw so that last quickly. time. We as saw soon as Jersey. you saw Clamour going to second position, you're like, oh, I like Clamour yeah, for yeah. second position. <laughs> uh, congratulations. Great insight there from Chris McCormack. But there she is in second position. Oh, look at that. Mac's favourite athlete. And Taylor Spivey. Taylor Spivey, Joanna Brown and Jody Stimson, who at times has looked a little bit shaken up, I guess. We would say, like, like she's put in a lot of effort, but here she, she keeps coming. She's such a an intense trainer. She puts so much into her work. Jody Stimson, the 2014 Commonwealth Games gold medalist, and it's starting to pay off at the back end of this one. And she sits in fifth position off the back of another Commonwealth Games medalist in Joe Brown, Charlotte McShane, and... 
Kirst and Casper, very different athletes. This bit is key to the race, actually. If someone's a really good downhill yeah. runner, you could make up five seconds on the Kirsten from you. Easy. So uh, going back to that second, third, fourth place battle between Clamour, Spivey, um, and, and whoever's catching them up, Joanna Joanna Brown, Brown uh, Jody Simpson. If any of those are a really good downhill runner, that could make it from him. We're going to see that coming into the, the shot now. Uh, I think so. See, there's a gap there. I think that's a clamor, and then Spivey, Spivey behind her. So you Brown. can see Joe Brown running hard. She's committed. Um, yeah, she's committed. You can see Jody at the, the cadence compared to Clamor's cadence isn't that much. So she's not really committing to run downhill that really fast. And I think uh, Kirsten Casper, because her stride is so short, so efficient, and it works so well, it's probably not the best way to run downhill as fast as you possibly can. This is unique in triathlon, though. We don't really see it, a really good bit of downhill on the course. So, you know, it's not something that they might be expecting or, or train for particularly. All right. Kay Zafiris, last time through transition, you are looking at bar incident or injury. Your eliminator champion and Rachel Clammer, who's really putting the hard yards in to drop the rest of the field. She's clear and now. claim second position, and she has done exactly that. Spivey is now looking to hold off Joanna Brown, and in the distance there, Joni Stimson, and that looks to be your top five. I'm not sure in what order. There's going to be a great race uphill between Taylor Spivey and Joanna Brown. There is Charlotte McShane in sixth position, Kirsten Casper in seventh, and Summer Cook yet to come around the corner. But there is Katie Zafiris just on a training run out the front. Clamour's run really yeah, well here. Really has. We haven't seen this in the other rounds, so yeah, it looks like she's been sensible, you know, saving her energy, and she's used it. We've hardly seen her at the front of the bike or anything, have we? So I think she's raced a really sensible three rounds here, and uh, she's uh, put the effort in when she needs to. This is going to be a great last 400 metres yeah. up this hill, though. <laughs> I, wouldn't really want to, I wouldn't want to be in a sprint finish up here. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Clamour, it's good to see her do well. She's had not a great finish to her season by her own admission, and and has had trouble with bike handling after having a crash mid-season. And she was disappointed with how she did in Jersey. I think she finished seventh overall. And it's going to be a strong finish from her, but she's got a, a pack chasing her. I think she might have some clear air. But right now, coming up the hill, she's been dominant from start to finish. Katie Zafira, she won in Jersey 2017. She won in Jersey 2018. That was three weeks ago. She won stage one of the Eliminator. She won stage two of the Eliminator. She picked up two grand for her efforts, and now she's going to pick up 25 championship points. It is Katie Zafiris, your Eliminator champion, and she has absolutely dominated the field. In second position, she has a look around. It is going to be Rachel Clammer, courtesy of a fantastic run, and you can tell how happy she is with that. Rachel Clammer comes in in second, and Joanna Brown has tracked down Taylor Spivey for third. She's been there or thereabouts, Joanna Brown. Taylor Spivey comes in in fourth position. Jody stimson has been fifth all the way throughout this third stage. And in sixth position, Charlotte McShane. Kirsten Cass will pick up seventh, and Summer Cook will pick up eighth, courtesy of a tough transition early on. But that was some fantastic racing, and no one had any chance of picking up Katie Zafiris. No way. I mean, she was clear on her own literally from the gun there, wasn't she? She swam straight off the front, and that was that great run there from Joanna Brown uh, to move up into third place. Taylor Spivey held on to fourth. I thought Jody might catch her on that finish. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought that was a Jody Stimson finish just to so you know, muscle her way up there, but um, obviously she just had nothing left. I thought that at the bottom. I saw Jody come around with uh, Taylor Spivey. I was wondering if she was going to be committed and have a big run up that to grab those championship points, but... Uh, I think the fatigue started to accumulate, right? You started to see a lot more in the face after that first climb on that last stage. They're a lot more tired. It'll be very, very interesting in the men's race to see what happens there. But uh, that was a magnificent event. And that is what the Eliminator is all about, making sure... It's for a tactical athlete. It's not necessarily for the fastest athlete. It's not necessarily for the strongest athlete, although the fastest and strongest athlete won on the day and by far. And it's going to be a different story in the men's race. But... You need to be able to think your way through this race and measure your efforts and remain tactical at all times. And then count. Count while you're running. So that's always uh, something a little bit different. But Katie Zafiris jumped off pots, uh, pontoon slot 18 three times, led out of the swim two of those times. She looked so comfortable. She got caught a little bit by Spivey in the swim towards the end. But once she got onto the hill that first time on the bike, there was no catching her. She's been fantastic in Super League format. She's just so suited to this one. Summer Cook had a tough transition, first of all, onto the bike and found herself on the back. You could see her there holding on. Eventually, she would get dropped. 
that just took a toll on her. You know, the first two or three laps, she could lose five, ten metres around that corner, get back on. But by the time you've done that a few times, that effort really paid its price. And because she was just about getting on, the other girls were having that whole straight, whatever mm. that is, a minute of rest potentially. Summer Cook was having seconds and then having to go back up the hill and do it all again. And that just uh, takes a, a toll run. eventually. Yeah. A great run from Rachel Clammer and a great win from Katie Zafiris. And let's have a look now at the results as they stand after that one. 16-18 is the mark. Keep that in mind when you see the men and see where she was because that was a great, great, great race from her. Clammer 13 seconds back. Brown 19. Spivey 24. Stimson 27. McShane, Casper and Cook your top eight.